guys seem to understand. I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. Contract negotiations are key to establishing a successful empire in Stellaris Overlord. In this video, I'm going to share my knowledge and provide to you a visual guide to the art of the deal. We're going to go through a five-step plan for the ultimate payoff. By the time you've finished watching this video, you should be well equipped to conquer the entire galaxy without ever firing a single shot. We're going to learn the ins and outs of the new vassal contract system in Stellaris Overlord. We're going to learn how we can install ourselves as another empire's overlord. We're going to learn some cheesy tactics for stealing all of their planets, pops and starships. And then finally, we're also going to learn how we can get the most economically out of another empire by becoming their subject. So without any further ado, let's dive in to part one. Welcome to the Human Hegemony. This is a feudal society which I will be using to show off the new vassal mechanics. We already have a number of neighboring empires which have been vassalized by us. If I go to the Union's map mode, you can see that the colors of these empires do change to match our own. And that's because they're vassals under the great might of the Human Hegemony. Once you have a vassal, either through conquest or diplomacy, and I'll get to how we can get one through diplomacy a little later, once we open up the contacts menu and go to agreements, we can see all the vassals we have. And here we can either do a term negotiation or a trade negotiation. A term negotiation will be the important thing here. This will be changing all of the different terms of the vassal contract. If you are an overlord or a vassal, you can get to this screen in order to negotiate it. Here we have the main negotiation screen. What we have here are a whole bunch of different legal options that will change our interaction with either our vassal or if we are a vassal with our overlord. Generally speaking, the further to the right the term is, the more that benefits the vassal and is positive for the vassal, and the further to the left the terms are, the more it benefits the overlord. For this reason, terms on the left tend to give you negative monthly loyalty, whereas terms on the right do tend to give positive loyalty. And loyalty is important. Loyalty decides the relationship between the two parties in the agreement between the overlord and the subject. If loyalty is positive, the subject is loyal, and if it's negative, they are disloyal. And then it changes by some amount every month. There are various ways of impacting the monthly loyalty change. First off, there are all of the agreements will have, which will have an impact. Then there are the holdings like the overlord garrison that you can build on your vassal's worlds in order to increase their loyalty. And depending on the opinion your subject has of you, if they have a good opinion, their loyalty will go up. And if they have a very bad opinion, it will go down. That means if you've conquered a vassal rather than getting them diplomatically, they could start with quite a high negative loyalty. The first term you have to choose between is subject integration. If integration is permitted, that means the overlord can integrate the subject into their empire. Pretty straightforward. If you're the vassal, you do not want this to ever be on integration permitted. As it is a high risk for the vassal, it also has a very hefty minus four monthly loyalty impact. Next, we have the diplomatic freedom of the subject. This can range from completely independent diplomacy, which means the subject is free to engage in diplomacy with other empires and vote independently. Subjects really like this one. To a midground where their diplomacy is restricted, the subject is free to engage in diplomacy, but they must follow their overlords votes in federations and in the galactic community. However, that doesn't mean they will always support. If you are supporting something, for instance, I want to support repeal regulated growth, my subjects can either choose to come and support me or they can stay and continue to abstain. What they won't be able to do is ever oppose something you put onto the Senate. It will also force the subject to agree to join any federation the Overlord is already a member of. And if the Overlord is a member of the galactic community, the subject will be forced to join as well. The most distasteful version of this is very limited limited diplomacy. The subject may not engage in diplomacy with other empires and cannot vote independently. This means they have to follow the way you vote in everything. Basically, their votes are your own. And if you're enjoying this video, please fulfill your contractual obligations to the like button. Next up, we have the expansion terms. This basically defines whether or not your subject will be able to build new star bases and thus expand their territory. On the very free side of things, we have expansion permitted. There's no change whatsoever there and subjects do quite like that one. Expansion regulated. This means subjects can expand, but they must pay a 50% extra influence cost 
to the Overlord, if you're the Overlord this is very nice, whenever they build an outpost. And finally, if expansion is prohibited, they cannot expand their empire at all. This is very restrictive for your subjects. Restart Contribution. Here we have the Contribution tab. Now this basically defines the economic relationship between an Overlord and their subjects. Unlike all of the rest of them, this one is a little counterintuitive because instead of being arranged left to right where left is good for the overlord and right is good for the subject, this has been inverted. If you move the sliders to the left, that represents the overlord paying a percentage of the subject's production to the subject as a subsidy. And if you move them to the right and the figure goes positive, that represents a subject paying taxes to the overlord. There are four different categories for these economic relationships. Basic resources, meaning that one party is paying energy credits, minerals, and food. Advanced resources, meaning you're paying alloys and consumer goods. Research, meaning you're paying some of your precious, precious research points every month. And strategic, which is generally the easiest one to find the production for. And you'll be paying volatile moats, exotic gases, and rare crystals. It's important to know that whenever you're trying to negotiate for some tribute from your subjects, for each of these categories you start to move up, your subject will get a minus 500 penalty to the agreement. It doesn't matter how far up you go in either of the categories, they'll still get this base 500 agreement on top of the fact that they don't like the loyalty chain. This means it is much, much more difficult to ask for 15% of two resources than it is to ask for 30% of just one resource category. To highlight this point, it's actually easier to get them to agree to a 75% tribute than it is to get the subject to agree to give you 15% of their basic resource and advanced resources at this point. And due to that, I'm pretty sure the way that we ask for resources in these vassal contracts is going to get rebalanced. The Overlord conflicts dictates what wars the subjects will get involved in on the Overlord's behalf. It can be set from none, which is actually quite bad for the Overlord, meaning the subject will never join the Overlord's wars. Defensive, the subject will only ever join the Overlord's defensive wars if they are ever declared war upon. Offensive, the subject will only ever join the Overlord if the Overlord declares the war. And all wars, meaning the subject will join, unsurprisingly, every war the Overlord is in. The further to the right you get with this one, the less the subject likes it. Subject conflicts is exactly the same as, as the Overlord conflicts, but defines the relationship between the subject and the Overlord, meaning if you set this to all, the Overlord will join all of the subject's wars. That means your subjects can declare offensive wars and then you'll be forced to join them, which can be very, very annoying. Next up, we have the holding limit, meaning how many holdings you can build in your subject's empire. This can be set all the way from zero, which will have no impact on loyalty, up to four, which has quite a high impact on monthly loyalty. The final term to be agreed upon is the census. This basically shows whether or not the Overlord will share their sensor data with the subject. A subject is required to share all sensor data with the Overlord already, but the Overlord can force the subject to see none of their sensor data. If you change to Unified Sensors, which doesn't cost you anything as an Overlord, not really anyway, you'll get a nice little buff to monthly loyalty without having to do anything else. If you'd like to buy Stellaris Overlord and also support this channel, you can do so by following the link down in the description and purchasing it on the Humble Bundle store. And there's also a sale on most of the Stellaris DLC until the 24th of May. On the top right here, we can also choose the type of subject we have. The first type is Vassal, which has some preset defaults, but generally this is the same as a Vassal was before patch 3.4. Then we have Tributary. These terms are again generally the same as what a Tributary was before 3.4. You have a 30% tax from the subject to the Overlord for your basic resources. After that, there are the three specialist subject types. Bulwark is the easiest to get your subject to agree to. The reason for this is that a Bulwark comes with a 30% tithe from the Overlord to the subject, meaning if you want to make a Bulwark, look out, you'll pay lots of resources through the nose for that privilege. Because you're giving subsidies to your vassal, this usually means that vassals are very happy to become bulwarks. Scholarium is the next specialist type that you can get with the Overlord DLC. This one means that your, the subject pays a 30% minimum tithe in research to the Overlord. 
it can be quite difficult to convince a subject to do this as getting a subject to pay any of their resources to the overlord gives a base minus 500 opinion modifier to agreeing to the deal. And finally, we have the Prospectorium. This gives 30% of the basic resources and 30% of the advanced resources to the Overlord. Generally speaking, because you're asking for two different types of resources, it is basically impossible to actually pull this off. I have not managed to get a single AI to agree to become a Prospectorium when I played patch 3.4 so far because asking for these two gives a minus 1000 penalty to the term negotiation whereas giving some subsidies doesn't give a plus 500 penalty to anything. It's simply the loyalty change impact here and the term change which you're going to find different. Each of these unique subject types, Bulwark, Scholarium and Prospectorium, also comes with special bonuses that will level up depending on how loyal the subject is. If your subject has positive loyalty, they'll gain 10% of their total loyalty as experience every month. Tier 2 will unlock at 1200 experience and Tier 3 will unlock at 3600 experience. The final thing we have here is what will happen to the subject when you change some terms around. At the moment, I've not changed any of the terms in this negotiation yet. Let's say I wanted to make the subject join all of my conflicts, both defensive and offensive, so I'd move this over to all. That will come with an immediate hit to the loyalty of the subject, as well as an ongoing monthly loyalty impact. This is reflected here. It shows I'm going to go from 100 down to 80, and minus 0.7 monthly loyalty down to minus 2.7. A little bit lower down, we can see both what the influence cost of these term changes will be, because in order to change any of these terms, you have to spend precious, precious influence, which I've tended to find now in patch 3.4, we're spending a whole lot of. Generally speaking, it costs more influence to move the terms towards something which is better for the overlord than the subject. For example, if I move to integration permitted, and I also move to overlord conflict all, that's going to cost me a whopping 425 influence. Now, I can offset this influence cost by moving other terms in favor of the subject. For instance, if I move from subject conflict defensive to all, that will reduce the total influence cost by 50 as moving from defensive to all cost me 50 less. However, it can be a bit confusing. If I only move the terms in a direction which is better for the subject, that still costs me more influence. Instead of receiving 50 influence for making the terms better for my subject, I now have to pay. But if I then move some other terms to make them, for instance, worse for my subject, I'm going to go from defensive to offensive here. Now I've gone from having to pay an extra 50 for moving to all subject conflicts down to paying the base cost of 50. As you can see, if I were to just do something better for the subject here, it would cost me 100. But if I ask for a little bit extra, that only costs 50. And then if you hover over the tick mark or cross at the bottom right of the screen, you get to see what the acceptance is. There are different things that change this acceptance. The relative power of your empire compared to their empire, I believe this is only military power. That can scale all the way up to plus 250. The monthly loyalty of the subject, that also has an impact on the agreement to the acceptance terms. The monthly loyalty of the new agreement also has an impact on the acceptance. The higher the monthly loyalty the new agreement will provide, the more likely the vassal is to accept. Also, the changes in the terms impacts the agreement of the vassal as well. If you're moving from terms which are better for the vassal than the overlord, this change in terms can even end up being negative. I'm now asking for integration to be permitted, and that's giving me a minus 156 change in terms. The final modifier down there at the bottom is the from agreement terms. This is impacted by the contribution terms. For each of the contributions you set where one party is paying another, the AI will get a minus 500 to their from agreement terms. This means if you try to get tributes, as I've mentioned before, in two of them, it will cost you minus a thousand, which from my experience is pretty insurmountable. You also, generally speaking, don't want to click the reset button here because that actually changes the weight of the agreement acceptance. If I click the reset button and I start at the beginning and I want to go to integration prohibited, independent diplomacy, expansion permitted, 30%, no overlord conflict, all, two holdings and unified censors, my vassal is currently telling me no. They are saying no with a minus 34 agreement acceptance. 
and a monthly loyalty apparently a plus one. If I go all the way back to my agreement screen and then reopen the term negotiation and I go through and add all of the same things I had before, suddenly they will happily agree. So it can be quite useful to use the reset button in certain circumstances because that will reset everything with the weightings back to some base modifiers. But otherwise, if you are the overlord, generally you just want to fiddle with a contract ever so slightly before sending it on to them to be agreed. Now we're going to look at how we can get our subjects to come on board diplomatically. In order to do this, you must simply be superior to the subject with your military power. If you are superior to the subject militarily, not economically or technologically, you can propose subjugation. It's also very important that they have a positive relationship with you. That means they have to be friendly, cordial, any of those type of things. It doesn't necessarily mean they have to have a, a relationship above zero, but their attitude must be a good one. Then we can go to propose subjugation, and now we can look at what the acceptance terms are here. There is a base of minus 50. There is something based on loyalty. Now that is their opinion of you. The higher the opinion they have of you, the higher this loyalty is. And the lower the opinion they have of you, the lower this loyalty is. And you will need to overcome it. Finally, the agreement acceptance is also based on empire population. So earlier on in the game, it can be much, much easier to form vassals. What you're going to want to do here, almost certainly, is agree to give them pretty much anything they'd want. If we agree to let these neighbors of ours do everything they want and we agree to join them in all of their wars, they will be very, very happy to take us on board. Now, overall, this would seem like a bad deal for us, but that's forgetting the fact that we can then renegotiate in five years. I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. And there we go. They've now agreed to become our vassal with some very, very comfortable terms except for the fact they won't be able to just leave us. But we can actually do much, much better than that. If you want to expand very rapidly without having any military progress, you do need to build a military fleet for this in order to be superior to your neighbors, but you don't have to be better than them in any way. Here we have a neighbor who is equivalent to us technologically and vastly superior to us economically. They have seven planets, which is quite a few more than us. We've only got habitats at the moment. But because we're superior to them, we can propose a subjugation agreement. Now, the important thing you're going to want to do here is set integration to be permitted. After that, set everything to be very much in favor of the subject. We do want them to be happy after all. And if they still won't agree to become your subject, we then get to stage two. Now, here what we're going to do is we're going to give up some of our research and I'm going to recommend strategic resources over your basic economy. The economic impact of giving up basic and advanced resources can be quite bad depending on the size of the economy you're trying to take over. In this case, their economy is quite a bit bigger than ours, so we, we probably don't want to give away lots of basic and advanced resources. By giving away 15% of their strategic production and 15% of their research production, they will now happily accept the agreement to become our subject. <laughs> 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 if you do end up getting more than one subject, make sure you've got something like the Shared Destiny Ascension perk. That's going to mean you don't suffer any monthly loyalty penalties from having multiple subjects. For every subject you have past the first, every other subject will suffer a minus one loyalty. So if you have three subjects, each subject will get minus two loyalty per month. Now that 10 years have passed with the mandate of Prak, they've actually ended up becoming equivalent to us. They are now equivalent in their military power, superior technologically, and equivalent economically. But that won't help them because we're now going to integrate this subject for the low, low cost of 296 influence. And it's only going to take us 59 months. So this is costing us a subsidy of around 50 research from each category, so 150 research over a period of around 16 years. And for that, we're going to get seven planets a navy and an entire empire, the Mandate of Prak. And there we go, everything has just triggered. We're now going to get to fully integrate all of Prak into our empire. When I click this button, we get it all. Our tech weight has exploded. The navy size has gone up dramatically because we've managed to get all of the ships of the neighboring empire that were once our rivals simply because we managed to sneak ahead of them in military power and offer them such fantastic terms when they were becoming our vassal. 
But what about becoming a vassal? Are there any ways of cheesing that? Well, you'd be surprised to know there are quite a few ways that we can cheese the AI when we want to become a vassal. First thing you'll want to do is you'll want to make sure you've got a reasonable stockpile of all resources so that one month will not bankrupt your economy. And in order to become a vassal, you don't actually have to disband any fleets. We're back here to the mandate of Prak, back in the similar situation, but we can still ask to become their subject. Now, let's say we wanted our overlord to give us lots and lots of nice subsidies. Well, they would say absolutely not. Get out of town. That is insane. But what if it wasn't insane? What you're going to need to do is go through every one of your planets and unemploy every single pop. This will have some minor stability and production issues, but don't worry, we're going to fix it after just one month, because generally speaking, a single month of massive negative stability and negative amenities will not destroy your economy, and it will also not make all of these planets revolt. This has now caused us to appear economically very weak. If we look at the economic power of our neighbor, they are now overwhelming towards us. We have just gone past that one month mark. And there, as you can see, we're now producing basically no resources. Because we are apparently so weak and inferior now, because we've given up all of our production and unemployed all of our pops for just one month, the Overlord is now more than happy to give us 45% of our base research production every month as a subsidy as well as 15% of our advanced alloys and other income. We don't have to join their conflicts. We don't have to, they don't have to join ours. We will give them some holdings. We'll also restrict our voting, sure, but we won't give them integration rights. This apparently sounds like an absolutely fantastic deal to them. So we're going to say yes and proceed. And there we are, they have agreed the Mandate of Prak will step in and help us out. Now we're going to go and restore all of our jobs. <laughs> And we'll get to the end of the month and bam, all of our production has now changed. It's now back where it used to be. But not only that, we are now getting significant subsidies from our overlord. They're paying around 70 to 80 research of every category per month, as well as a whole bunch of alloys. If we were to try to come back to renegotiate this agreement, they would say no with an acceptance of minus 1,750. So yes, you've got it here, folks. This is how you can cheese the overlords. Due to the way they've actually set up the acceptance weightings, it means you can get more resources, more stuff out of the AI empires if you are their vassal rather than if you are the overlord. When you're the overlord, it is impossible to get an AI empire to agree to give you tribute in more than two categories. But as a subject, it is very, very simple to get an AI overlord to hand you enormous subsidies in multiple resource categories. This is the ultimate in negotiation, the ultimate art of the deal. If you've enjoyed this video and you've enjoyed how to steal everything from your AI neighbors, why not go one step further and learn how to steal their genetic heritage as well? If you'd like to know how to steal the genetic heritage of an entire species, click the video on screen now.